What's up, heathens? How you doing? I'm the Godless Engineer, and I critically analyze apologist claims to give you the best arguments and information so that you can stand up and use your voice. Tonight, we're going to be taking a look at John Kragan. If you don't know John Kragan, I have done uh, maybe a video or two on him before. And tonight, he is going to be talking about the irrational dangers of atheism tonight. And he, I don't know why why he thinks that it's, uh, there are irrational dangers. I don't know if he's saying that it's irrational to think that there are dangers or what. Anyways, he is definitely not on the side of atheism tonight. He claims to be a former atheist, so he's going to be telling us why we shouldn't be atheists and the dangers of being an atheist. So we are going to be taking a look at that tonight. If you want to fuck around and find out how dangerous atheism is or rather how dangerous it's not, then please stay tuned. What's up, heathens? I just real quick wanted to let y'all know about a new course featuring Dr. Richard Carrier. He's going to educate all of us about New Testament studies. And it's from a position where it's palpable for everybody. This is provided through Myth Vision. Uh, Derek has done a lot of work over there to get a lot of great scholars to teach various courses. It's really affordable, so if you want to take a course from a scholar of ancient history, then definitely hit up the link down below to go and sign up for Dr. Carrier's new course, New Testament Studies for Everyone. Or you could always go to godlessengineering.com forward slash NT Studies course. So please check it out. Let me know if you like it or not. I'm going to be doing the course, so I hope to see you there. Okay, so we're going to be getting into the video tonight. So John is going to be telling us about the irrational dangers of atheism. And so I'm very interested to hear what these irrational dangers are. Let's find out. All right, I just wanted to, from a perspective of myself, I'm an ex-atheist, just talk about just the dangers and the irrationality of atheism. Okay, so like I said, I'm an ex-atheist. I was an atheist for most of my early teens. And, you know, by God's grace, he saved me out of the sci-fi communist uh, religion of atheism. The sci-fi communist religion of atheism. You heard that, huh, hon? So for one thing, atheism isn't science fiction. Just to take this one by one here. Atheism is not science fiction. Atheists, uh, in, in, a, in a very general sense, were just not convinced of the arguments for God and uh, the arguments against specific definitions of God that we have, uh, or deities rather, like the arguments against them are actually way better than the arguments for them. And so we're we just remain unconvinced that any kind of deity exists is is what it boils down to. There's no science fiction in that. It, it's just an honest uh, look at the evidence. I don't know what he means by that. Communists? Um, well, some atheists are probably more than likely communists. That doesn't mean that all atheists are communists. And uh, I don't understand how atheism can be communist by itself. But a atheism is just not believing in a god. There's no way that can be communistic or a, co a communist idea. Theology. And then uh, religion, uh, atheism is definitely not a religion. I get that a lot of uh, apologists want to try to paint atheism as a religion, but there's no way that atheism can be a religion, a religion, because it's just one single aspect of a person's uh, worldview, and that's whether or not they believe in a god. That's it. That's all atheism is. He also said, you know, that he was an atheist for 20 years or whatnot. I'm not in the business to question somebody's life experience. Uh, it is as far as, huh? Oh, you already pressed X to doubt. Um, it, it does seem like a lot of what he says is through a very religious lens, and it does make me question as to whether or not he was really an atheist. But for the purposes of this video, I don't see any kind of benefit to questioning him being an atheist. I think it's perfectly fine for us to assume that he was an atheist, but maybe he'll change my mind by the end of it with whatever kind of fucking crazy shit he says. All right, let's see what else he's got. And I just wanted to just briefly say some things about the dangers of atheism and also just the irrationality of it. So first of all, I want to point out that when I was an atheist, I was actually depressed, you know, and it wasn't until Jesus Christ saved me that I began to have actual real joy. Because that's where he goes wrong, because... Well, I mean, you can, uh, you know, find solace in religion if you're depressed, clinically depressed or anything like that. But I feel like if you're just going to run to religion and well, what it makes me think of is, um, you know, the scene in Big Daddy, uh, the Adam Sandler movie. What happened there? You all hopped out? Okay. All right. I 
I don't know how to deal with this. Hopefully, Vanessa will. I think she's back. If she's not back, we'll wait for her. Jeez. Come on, get your coat. Clean up. Oh, God. You don't have to pee, do you? No. So the puke is your mental health and it, it's bad. It's everywhere. It's shit. And then I feel like religion is Adam Sandler walking around the apartment, putting um, newspapers on top of the shit. You're not actually cleaning it up. You're just putting something on top of it to, to at least make it visually not look like there's vomit everywhere. And I feel like that's what religion does for mental health. I feel like people use religion to cover up the um, bad mental health that they have. And they think that they have over overcome their mental health issues, uh, but they really haven't. All they've done is laid newspaper on top of it just so that, it, you know, it, it, if you don't, uh, what is it? Um, out of sight, out of mind, basically is, uh, what it, what it seems like to me. I feel like if you, if you are clinically depressed, definitely seek professional help. I know I did. Uh, when, when I finally admitted to myself that I was, uh, depressed, I exhibited all of the uh, symptoms of depression. I, I went and I saw a psychiatrist and then, you know, I was able to get in with a, uh, a counselor or a therapist and, uh, you know, I was able to talk out my issues and, um, with a little bit of help from some medication, but also the therapy, it, uh, helped me really get past that. It helped me heal myself in those areas, but uh, it's going to be a lifelong like struggle for me because, you know, I'm always, I feel like I'm always going to fight the, the, these depressive swings that I have. But the difference is, is that I have better tools now to recognize when I hit those depression lows. I don't spiral anymore. I don't go go down, uh, you know, farther and farther and farther to where I get to the point where, you know, uh, some bad stuff can happen. And I, I feel like if you just cover that up with Jesus, while it may seem to work on the surface, you're not actually solving the problem. So I hate that John here, uh, I hate that he uh, had this kind of situation and that he didn't seek help for it. I, I, I wish that he had sought help for it. I think it's fine if, if he becomes religious, but I don't think that you should use religion to cover up your mental health problems. I think that you should definitely deal with those head on with a professional. There really is no joy in atheism when you really get down to it. Now, there could be some exceptions to the rule. I'm not denying that. But when I was an atheist, I can just say that atheism honestly made me depressed for a while. Because here, here's the thing, you know, regardless of what religion you believe in, you could believe in, in a satanic uh, cult like Roman Catholicism or Islam. But when you feel down, when you have problems, what, what happens is subconsciously and mentally and psychologically, you, you're not truly alone because you believe you have, you know, for the Muslims, they'll pray to their Arabian moon idol of Allah. You know, for the Catholics, they'll pray to their uh, Babylonian goddess of the Virgin Mary. Honey, what do you think about Mary being portrayed as a Babylonian goddess? He's, probably, he's twisting the idea. That oh, yeah. Only Catholics pray to Mary, but that doesn't mean she's a Babylonian goddess. What, what, what he's saying here is that atheism is dangerous because that means that you're alone. But the, the weird thing is, is that I don't I'm not alone. Like, I don't feel alone. Like, maybe he was alone. Maybe he didn't have anybody. I don't know what his personal history is. I, I, I hate that, uh, you know, he found himself in a position where he was utterly alone. Um, but again, just like with the newspaper on top of your mental health, analogy. I feel like pretending that there's a God or I don't think that he was pretending that there was a God, but, you know, just saying, oh, well, well you know, religion's better or uh, Christianity's better because you're never alone because God's there. I don't believe in God and I have plenty of people around me. I mean, uh, you know, Casey's the only one that matters, of course, <laughs> in that respect. I, I, I can't imagine me, even if I was alone, I can't imagine me suddenly being like, oh, God, uh, maybe that could happen. Uh, people feel lonely or whatever. Um, and so they, they turn to religion. But but again, I feel like that's just putting a newspaper over the vomit. Finding some kind of community out there to build a support structure out of, I think, would be far better than just, you know, believing in God. You you can believe in God and uh, still not have a good support structure around you. I, I really don't think that uh, becoming religious just so that you're not alone anymore is a good solution for anything. You know, uh, and despite the fact that Roman Catholicism and Islam are satanic cults, 
they do have a higher power they believe they can pray to. And in that sense, psychologically and subconsciously, they're not truly alone. I'm sorry. Islam and Catholicism are satanic cults? What? I mean, I don't understand how he gets there because both of them actively work against the quote unquote devil or Satan or whatever. So I, I just I don't understand how he can get to Catholicism as a satanic cult. Now, uh, the the organization, the Catholic organizations definitely um, uh, evil. If you could, if you could tag anything as evil, um, I, I would think that they are very bad, a very bad group. But as far as Catholicism, the religion goes, I don't see it as being satanic considering that they worship Jesus. They just also happen to worship uh, other things as well, like Mary. That doesn't make it satanic. But if you're an atheist, if you have problems, if let's say you're abandoned, in your mind, you truly are all alone. You have nobody except yourself. It's that simple. And when I was an atheist, that was exactly what I was thinking. It's that simple. I, I mean, in my mind, I was thinking I have nobody. All I have is just me and my miserable, you know, body, essentially. Well, like, I, I guess I don't understand why he thinks he's got a miserable body. Like, I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't I don't see the appeal of feeling this way about like your life in general. Like, I totally get that he was he was very depressed. He was a very depressed person. Um, And a lot of times when you're depressed like that, you're not thinking rationally. But I, I feel like at least for in, in my um, experience, this sounds a lot like me when I'm not thinking thinking irrationally and I'm thinking very emotionally like you know thinking in this kind of way for me was a sign that you know I was being irrational what he's talking about here is very emotional um it's very uh subjective to how he sees himself so I don't know I feel like this video is just highlighting the importance of mental health care. And I don't mean that in a derogatory sense at all. I, I mean that in, in the very serious way that if you're suffering from depression or, or clinical depression or any other kind of mental illness, definitely seek professional help for that. And you shouldn't feel ashamed at all for seeking that kind of help. That That's just, that's what I hear coming from, from Kragen right now. Like, I don't see anything about a, a, an irrational danger uh, in atheism or atheism as an irrational danger, because um, just not believing in a God doesn't affect me in the ways that he's talking about and doesn't affect anybody that I know in the ways that he's talking about. Everything that he's talking about screams some kind of deeper issue. And, and, and even if you're in Christianity, we believe in the human is composed of body, soul and spirit. But even if you're, if you're an atheist, you're just a chunk of flesh. So you really got nobody. That's that's a simple fact of the matter. And when I was an atheist, I was depressed and you know, I was going down a dark path, a pretty dark, violent and dark path. Whoa, 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 whoa. When he was an atheist, he was going down a violent and dark path. Yeah, something's fucked up there. I feel like most atheists are not violent. Christians can go down violent, dark paths. Everything that he's saying here is a benefit to religion or a benefit to believing in God can equally happen on uh, with somebody that believes in God. But it, it would take a lot for me to get myself to believe in, in a deity at this point. And, and that's just because I feel like I've thoroughly researched the question. And unless there's some kind of new empirical information uh, or empirical data about God, I I'm going to remain agnostic on the existence of a deity in general. I feel like if your position of going down a dark, violent path is indistinguishable from Christians that go down dark, violent paths and God's still not helping those people out. In fact, those people that go down these dark, violent paths as Christians have an easy out because they just have to pray for forgiveness or promise to God they'll never do it again and God will forgive them and they'll get into heaven under, you know, certain denominations. I mean, there's an easy out as a Christian if you're going down a dark, violent path. In fact, right now, I, I don't really want to come across John Kragen anywhere because if he was going down a dark, violent path before, spreading God on that shit's not going to cause you to not go down that path. And that's the fruit of atheism for you. You know, there's a reason why all the communist religions and everything like that, all the communists, because whenever they get down to it, communism is a religion. It, 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 they, it acts just like a religion. They have a holy book. They got the, the manifestos, which is like their holy books. And it's rooted in atheism. You've never had a manifesto? I, I mean, I haven't, but he's talking about communists. He's talking about communists and how communism uh, acts like a religion. And, uh, you know, j just because communism, well, like there's the communist manifesto, 
But I mean, they definitely don't treat that as if it's like a holy book. Like that's that's not their holy book. Um, and and communism is a is a form of government. It's it's definitely not a religion. Like if you form a communist government, it's not a theocracy because communism is not a religion. I mean, that's just it's, it's in the definition of what communism fucking is. It's not a religion. But also atheism being the root at the root of communism. Sure, there there have been like atheist regimes or rather state atheist regimes where they uh, ban religion and enforce state atheism, but that's where they replace the state or, or they replace religion with the state. So instead of worshiping a God, they venerate the state like it was a religion or something like that. That's vastly different from being rooted in atheism. And I feel like he is just confusing the concepts of like the modern atheist uh, community uh, or, or movement or whatever you want to say and state atheism that is enforced by these countries. He's he's confusing the two in order to make this particular argument that atheism leads to communism and uh, killing people and everything like that because he was going down a dark, violent path. And um, I guess he forgets all of the uh, theocracies out there that have done their share of killing and their share of like crusades and conquistadors and massive slaughter of people just because they're not Christian. And when you get down to the fact of the matter, I've been saying that quite a lot, but there's a, a lot of, of issues to cover is that atheism, uh, the fruit of atheism is on full display in North Korea. You know, because North Korea, they have state enforced atheism and it's illegal to criticize atheism over there. It's you, if you practice anything other than atheism, you're going to get you're going to go to jail. You're going to get persecuted. That's the fruit of atheism. That, that's what happens when you have when you don't have church state separation. I'll be covering also, the fact of how uh, state-enforced atheism is uh, against church-state separation. I've covered that in other videos before. Well, I mean, yeah, state-enforced atheism would be like anti separation of church and state because that's the state legislating laws that restrict religion. There's there's shamanism in North Korea, Shandoism, and small communities of Buddhists and Christians in North Korea. So, I mean, I, I feel like he's wrong about them not being able to be the, a part of those religions. Although, I, I mean, I don't know if North Korea is a state, a state atheism type place. Apparently, Shandoism is a religion that's represented in politics there uh, in North Korea. What he said about state, it, like state enforced atheism, like he's talking about would infringe on the separation of church and state. Obviously, I don't I don't know if how North Korea operates. I mean, it's it's a pretty um, it. it <sighs> I feel like there's no way for us to really know exactly what what's going on in North Korea. But obviously there are other religions that exist in North Korea. The fact is, is that North Korea enforcing state atheism is not what atheism is in the colloquial sense. Like in, in general, uh, normal society or I guess uh, regular society, society that's not North Korea. Uh, basically what he's saying here, at least what he's trying to insinuate is that if you're an atheist, you hate religion and you want to extinguish it like completely and you're violent. I, I feel like is the mes message that he's trying to communicate here. Um, but I, I mean, atheists are one of the biggest proponents of separation of church and state, especially here in the United States. I don't know what he's talking about here other than he's just spread. He's fear mongering people, hopefully, I guess, in his eyes or in his view, fear mongering people to believe in God. But the dangers of atheism is just simply the fact that it can cause depression because when you're truly alone in, uh, in your mind, you're truly alone, you know, but when you have, even if you're a Hindu, a Muslim or a Catholic or whatever, you have some kind of a deity you can pray to. And so, like I said, you're not truly alone. I know, I know I'm repeating myself, but that I want to just hammer on that point. Well, I mean, even even if you are alone, just smearing God on it is not going to actually handle the issue because the issue is deeper than religion can really help you with. It, it's a mental issue. If you if you have issues with depression or issues with loneliness and, and how that affects your mental health, then you need to seek therapy. I'm not saying don't be religious. I'm just saying that whether you're religious or not religious, seek therapy for mental health problems. And I feel like 
John wouldn't be sitting here saying all of this irrational shit if he had just gotten some help when he needed it. But he chose to rub God on that shit and, you know, it didn't clean up the vomit in Adam Sandler's apartment and it's definitely not going to wash this shit away. So atheism is psychological depravity and also just the irrationality of it as well, of how you can go out in nature. I mean, just simply go out in nature and look at all the just amazing, vast uh, scenery, look at all the, the vast, diverse species of, of uh, organisms and everything. Look at the trees! It's what he just did. Yeah, you know, and do you think, oh, it just came, you know, like what, essentially what atheism says is that humans came from algae, which morphed into frogs or whatever. I mean... No, that's that's not what atheism says. All atheism is, is not believing in God. A, a person that does not believe in God is an atheist in that sense. Um, they're not convinced that a God exists, so they don't believe in one. What he's talking about there is the straw man version of the scientific explanation for the diversity of life on Earth, which would be evolution. But uh, see, the problem is, is that evolution doesn't say that there was bacteria that transformed into a frog that then transformed into a human. That violates the law of monophyly. Like a frog is never going to turn into a human. But if an amphibian were to ever, you know, transform into a bipedal uh, organism, I mean, they would still be part of the amphibian clay, the group of, of organisms that known as amphibians. They would still be part of that group. We're not part of that group. We Frogs can never become humans. He's just totally misunderstanding what evolution is uh, at this point. I used to know evolution a lot. I just don't really care about it anymore because it's a bunch of uh, garbage. So <laughs> bravo, Dr. John Cragen throwing away evolution because it's just dumb garbage. Oh, no, no, no. He doesn't have a real doctorate there, hon. Uh, I feel like he's just got a doctorate or he's just got expertise from like uh, Creationist Ministries International, Answers in Genesis, or, uh, Dinosaur Adventure Land. I'm just going to stay the fuck away from this guy. Just the irrationality of it as you go and, and just go out in nature, look at all the vast organisms, all the vast uh, diverse ecosystem, and you think, oh, it all just came from nothing. <laughs> it, it yeah it all came from nothing guys hold on there you go <laughs> that's that's basically what john just described that all of this came out of nothing it, it didn't come out of nothing the evolution's a slow and gradual process it took billions of years for the diversity of life to develop here on Earth. So it, it didn't develop out of nothing. But I mean, if he's talking about the Big Bang, it still didn't like bang out of out of nothing necessarily. The nothing that existed at the beginning of the universe was still something. Because if you believe in the Big Bang, you're essentially saying something came from nothing. It's ridiculous. Oh, but his version of things is better because he has a wizard at the beginning that spoke an incantation and created everything. And that's better than the scientific explanation. Here are the competing uh, hypotheses for the, uh, at least as far as, you know, between religious and the scientific community, as far as when, when uh, or what happened at the start of this universe. So... Science would tell you that it was a fluctuation in a quantum scalar field where um, it was this quantum scalar field was in a false vacuum state. And for whatever reason or no reason at all, we don't really know. It hopped that that lit to go into a full vacuum state. Now, we know that when this does happen to quantum scalar fields, it releases an immense amount of energy. So when it releases this immense amount of energy, it filled. This is the near instantaneous uh, expansion of the universe that we commonly call the Big Bang. It filled the universe with inflaton particles, and these particles eventually transformed into what would become matter today. And uh, I mean, like atoms couldn't form for 300,000 years after this because it was so hot and dense that um, you know atoms couldn't couldn't form. So there's the scientific hypothesis for the Big Bang or the beginning of the universe. Okay, here's the Christian version or uh, religious version uh, as far as like the Abrahamic religions go. Well, there was this old white dude with a magnificent beard, and he spoke the universe into existence, and then he spread his butt cheeks apart, and there was light. But he got tired of that one day. 
And so he created the sun and that's how everything was created. He spoke everything into ex existence as it is today. I may have paraphrased a little bit of that. Those are the competing hypotheses here. Actual empirical science, magical wizard at the beginning of the universe. Am I really supposed to take the religious version of that seriously? Now, I don't mean to represent it as at, like all every religious person thinks like in a creationist sort of sense. Uh, obviously, there are scientifically minded Christians. I don't get that, but, you know, they figured out a way to combine those two. So I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the, you know, creationists, which is what he is uh, pushing here in this video. So that's why I'm specifically addressing that. I want to just point that out, just the dangers and irra irrationality of atheism. Uh, it's insanity. So don't be deceived by atheism, as I was for my early, most of my early teens. So yeah, take it from me, an ex an ex atheist, a former atheist who uh, God saved from His grace, uh, by His grace, I'll put it that way. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Did you notice at the end there that he uh, he only said for Christ to be with the brethren? Like, uh, uh, is the brethren uh, in including like everybody, or is it only like the Brosefs? Uh, I feel like it might be the Brosefs that he's only talking about there. But anyways, all in all, for John's video, I did not find any of it convincing. What I found was somebody who desperately needed some kind of therapy when he was younger. And instead of getting help for it, he decided to turn to religion. And I feel like that's putting newspaper on vomit because the vomit being your mental health and it being bad, bad mental health, and just covering it with this God belief. I, I'm not saying that it will always turn out bad, but I feel like there's a very low percentage of positive outcomes whenever you do that, because you're not actually addressing the issue. And I feel like we see this highlighted in John's video, how how he's portraying uh, the atheist position as being, you know, lonely and violent and dark and uh, associated with bad things that have happened in the past. And I, I mean, you noticed him just totally spacing out on all of the bad shit that religious people have done in the past and how religion has fueled many conflicts in the past. I feel like ignoring all that and painting your side as the better side instead of presenting an even, uh, even handed like, uh, analysis of it all, um, only shows that you're looking to push a narrative. And that's exactly what John's doing on his channel everywhere all the time. He's just looking to push this narrative that's a, a straw man version of atheism. And he's he's pushing this this word view of Christianity, um, which I mean, it's mainly creationist, but he has some like conspiracy theory type shit mixed in there. Anyways, that's going to be it for the video tonight. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you will, if you're watching right now, please uh, smash that like button uh, if you've made it this far for John's video. I, I feel very sorry for him. Uh, he, it's, it sounds like a very sad story that he has. And I just wish that he had actually dealt with his mental health instead of throwing paper on it, smear, smearing it with God shit, God's Holy Spirit. And you know what I mean. Uh, if you will, please go down below. Let me know what you thought about John's video tonight uh, in the comments. I'd really love to read y'all's uh, y'all's takes on it and everything. I do come through there on occasion uh, looking at everybody's responses. So please leave me your thoughts uh, while you're down there. Why don't you smash that like button and subscribe if you like this kind of content. I hope that you guys have a great weekend, a great night. And um, don't forget to stand up and use your voice. Bye, heathens.